right, so how you guys doing? My name is Pastor Howie from Impact Life Church and also the morning show on 105.3 New Life Radio here on the Brother Henry and You Show. Um, I'm just so honored to be here that he asked me to come and talk a little bit. I know he's got a lot of viewers and, and thank you guys for watching. I wanted to talk a little bit um, about what you probably see on like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and and even like the news makes jokes about it. Uh, I was sitting there watching, um, you know, my social media uh, Facebook go by one time, and I was I was seeing all these like memes about millennials, you know, and making fun of them. You know, you've heard it all, right? You've heard the entitled generation. You know, uh, everyone gets a trophy. And I got to admit, you know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> you know, you you see some of the memes and some of the funny songs and videos. But it got me thinking, and the Lord just started talking to me a little bit about um, the millennial generation. Now, if you're not familiar with, like, um, the millennial, let me just talk about it just a little bit. Now, is there anybody born from basically 1980 to 2000? So that's a large swath of people. They're called millennials. Now, um, I'm a Gen Xer, and the generation before me is a baby boomer. So there you have it. You've got the millennial, that age bracket there. Um, the Lord really started, I mean, really kind of messing with me a little bit. <laughs> you ever had God mess with you a little bit? Like, wake you up from your sleep, you know, like you're sleeping on a bed of rocks. and Well, he did that. And uh, kind of convicted me about calling millennials bad of what he's called good. Basically, it was like, Howie, why, why is your generation and the generation before calling this new generation bad whenever I've called them good. Maybe they're bad because you've been calling them this instead of declaring what I should be, uh, what I declare over them. And I gotta tell you, it, it like went off uh, like a light bulb inside of me. And I went, oh my goodness, you know, have I, have I been part of the problem and not part of the solution? You know what I mean? Have I been a critic and not a critiquer? You know, there's two differences between um, criticism and critiquing. Criticism uh, brings no solution. Critiquing brings solution with love. You know what I'm saying? And so I just started talking about millennials and just reading and doing research and um, also seeing what God had to say about it. And I started to realize a few things that that this generation that we call lackadaisical, um, lazy, uh, entitled, they're doing some amazing things and it never gets called out and so if they're doing these amazing things right now what could happen if we really started calling out greatness inside of them I believe every generation should be a platform for the one coming up next right and so because if there if there's no voice calling good out of them there's no voice calling destiny out of them then uh, they lose track of themselves. You, you know the scripture that says where there is no vision, the uh, people perish? It's actually where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. And that, and that word vision can also mean um, prophetic voice or a voice of guidance. I like to think of it as a fatherly voice, right? Where there's no father's voice and vision, People cast off restraint and they go crazy. Like in Judges chapter 3, for example, right? So uh, Joshua, who was the patriarch, dies of the, of the uh, children of Israel, right? So he dies. And that's when they entered the time of the judges. And it's, it, they, it's, the scripture says that every time a, a judge would die, uh, the people would cast off restraint. And that generation was worse than the one previous. And so it, it started telling me something that where there is no fatherly voice, where there's no patriarchal voice into a generation, um, they get worse and worse and worse. And so I believe that uh, the Gen Xers and baby boomers, I believe that we can speak some things into the millennial generation and even the generation Y coming up after them to set them on a trajectory perhaps they've just been living out what we've been saying about them, you know? 
millennials, it's this, it's this, uh, it's this weird generation in a good way, right? So they were the only uh, generation brought up in the first 24-hour news cycle and a culture that's constantly at war or in crisis. I mean, so think about that. Their psyche was formed um, in, in a 24-hour news cycle. And you think of war, you think of financial crisis. And so they've been bombarded with it. And so they long for a feeling of safety and connection. And that's why I, I, I looked and I went, oh, so millennials just aren't wanting to live and uh, uh, um, kind of soak off of mom and dad and just hang out in the basement. They're wanting safety and connection, that feeling of, of safety that comes from connection because they were raised in the 24-hour crisis. You know what I'm saying? They want to give back. I mean, you look at um, nonprofits, most nonprofits, upwards around 90% of nonprofits started or started by millennials, like feeding the, the hungry, taking care of the widow and caring for the orphan. Um, I saw some figures just the other day that said um, giving the number one place, 84% of millennials give out of charity, the number one place, their place of worship. The number two place, nonprofits, faith-based nonprofits. I mean, think about that. I mean, that blows to bits most of what people are saying about millennials. Like, they're leaving the church and they want nothing to do with it. Absolutely, they want something to do with it. They just want you to do something worthwhile and not just sit in your pretty palace. I mean, I'm just being honest, right? So give me something authentic. Let me get my hands dirty. Let me get my feet wet. What can I do, right? Not that they're trying to earn salvation, but they want to truly be the embodiment of Christ on earth. That's what they're really looking for. And so they're not leaving the church. They might be leaving certain churches, but it's, it, they're not leaving the body of Christ, and they want to give, and they're enthusiastic about it. So we can start calling that out. We can say, you know what, it's okay to be that. It's okay to want to get your hands dirty and your feet wet. This generation is something, I believe, that can be um, history-changing. Right, so history is always history uh, is always looking for someone to shape it. Culture is always looking for someone to shape it. And if there's no one there, um, there'll be a vacuum, um, a, a vacuum to do that. Let me take you back to the '60s and '70s. I know I'm going fast, but I'm just passionate about this stuff. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love looking at the generation behind us and going, okay, what? How can I encourage them? You know what I'm saying? Encourage means to place courage inside of someone so that they can make, make the step forward. How can we encourage them? I'm not giving a pass or an excuse. I'm talking about truly building a platform for them to step onto to go further than we could have. You know what I mean? And not get jealous and not be envious that a generation is doing greater things than we did, right? So let me take you back to the 60s, all right? So you had um, the peace and love movement, right? Remember the peace and love movement? You see the hippies out in San Francisco and they're dancing around and uh, um, they're, they're carrying their peace and love signs and uh, I believe that that was an opportunity for revival. I mean, look at it, it had all the trappings of it. Right? First off, what is the kingdom? Um, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Right? What were they proclaiming? Peace, love, and joy. But there was a vacuum there because the generation prior to them was not equipping them to handle an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right? So what happens? A counterfeit steps in in the form of LSD, Dope, um, hallucinogenics, you know, Timothy Leary, tune in, tune out, you know. He steps in, that whole thing steps in with a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit. 
Right? That's why Scripture says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. There's an inebriating effect that happens from the Holy Spirit, and whenever the Holy Spirit is moving in your life, that will cause you to do courageous things and to do amazing things. And, and you feel, it, there's almost can be a euphoric feeling as well. It's not all about, all about feeling. But, um, so that was a counterfeit. They stepped in. So that generation kind of missed it. We saw the Jesus movement toward the end of the 60s, end of the 70s, um, which was huge. That happened, but I believe we could have had a whole decade, a whole decade of complete outpouring and revival like we have never seen the kingdom manifest on planet Earth. Well, now, that brings us to present day. All right, we're right on the cusp of that because you look at a millennial, um, they're anywhere from... Uh, 18, whatever, 18 to 30, something like that. That is the exact age that the hippie movement started, right? And so now we have possibly a vacuum. So the question is, what's going to step in? Are we going to allow the Holy Spirit to, to tell us to declare things over them so that the Holy Spirit can then move? Or are we going to shrink back and just point out the negatives? It doesn't take a genius to see negatives in people. It doesn't. That's, that's a critic. The enemy sees negatives in people. That's his M.O., right? Because he's not that bright. But, you know, it takes a, a, a genius. It takes someone moved by the Holy Spirit to be able to look through the junk and find the little piece of gold. You know, you got to dig through a lot of dirt to get to a little gold. And that's where we are. This is, that is where we find ourselves right now with the millennial generation. I call them the next generation. I believe that tag millennial has some connotations and some stigma to it even that, that uh, um, is a little condescending in, in a way. So that is the big challenge. That's the, uh, the big question. How will you do it? And, and will you commit today to do that? Right? I did a video not too long ago saying, um, I'm sorry, millennials. You know, I apologize. Because all these things I've said about you, and really if I looked under the hood of the car, of the vehicle, of the generational vehicle, if I looked under the hood, I saw some different things some things that were different than what I was seeing on social media. And I just thank you, if you're, if you're a millennial watching this, if you're part of the next generation watching this, thank you, right? Thank you for the breath of fresh air. I mean, you are a breath of fresh air. You carry a fresh fire that not only sets other people on, on fire, but you can take old dead wood and set it ablaze. Like, that's what you carry. Like, you carry a, a little bit of the knowledge and a little bit of the, ex, of the experience. And when those two start to marry, when, when knowledge and experience start to come together, you start to get wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? So knowledge and experience teach us, right? Uh, teach us that the fear of the Lord is what moves us into wisdom, on how to use the knowledge and experience. It's a beautiful marriage, and that's happening in you right now. And so I just want to speak to that. I don't want to tell you how great you are. If I could be a, a father's voice into your heart right now and just say, you're amazing. You're beautifully and wonderfully made. You've been set apart for, for a time such as this. Don't worry about what they say to you. Don't worry about what the news says. Don't worry about what the funny memes say. Don't, don't worry about that garbage. You just worry about what Papa in heaven has to say about you. And he calls you great. He calls us great before we're great. Right? He calls us beautiful while we're still ugly. This is amazing. I like the creator of the universe. Right? So the one who put billions of nerves in, in, in our body, who, who um, uh, uh, it, it put in us arteries and blood vessels that if we took them all out, they would stretch around the earth 
two and a half times, I mean, in each person. I mean, think about that. Your body generates enough heat in 30 minutes to boil water. I mean, this is amazing that he would place the human eye in us that if it was completely dark, we could see a light nine miles away. I mean, this is the creator with such intricacy that molded you and formed you and shaped you and that has put, placed you here for a purpose, for a reason. Isn't that amazing to you? He didn't just place you on this rock that's spinning some 220,000 miles an hour and we're not flying off of it. <laughs> How that happens, I don't know. He didn't place you here to just be earth clutter. He placed you here for greatness. If we are indeed moving into that time, if we are indeed moving into that time where a vacuum could be created, don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. With everything within you, we don't want to go back to a time of judges, right? I want to live in a time of presence. But one or two things is going to happen. Heed my warning. Listen to me. Listen to me. If, you're, if you have ears, just listen to me. A vacuum is going to be created, church, if we don't step up. If we don't start calling out greatness and I'm not talking about just pat answers calling out greatness I'm talking about getting into each person's life and finding that piece of gold and fostering it and shining it and dusting off home play and letting them know that they have so much to offer right if you're a millennial watching you do if you're not part of that generation and you want to help start encouraging someone today right thank you guys so much for um, having me on the show and let me talk about the next generation Millennials it's a topic I love and I believe that Jesus Jesus is shining his favor right now on that generation to go further than we could ever go and do more than we could ever do and so, if we can sit back and be cheerleaders, mwah, I'll have my pom-poms on the sideline after I'm out of the game, and I'll be cheering the next generation on. This is the Brother Henry and You Show. Thank you so much for having me. I love you, and uh, more importantly, God loves you. All right?